is you know show you how quickly tail call can bootstrap a graphql endpoint on top of rest uh, all existing rest endpoints we can do a lot more than that but just to be within the time frame this is going to be a quick demo so imagine you have a set of apis let's say these are your apis json placeholders you've got host api let's say you have user api so you hit post the rest api get a list of posts each post has a title body you know the user id that posted created that post and an id of that post and similarly you also have users api lists set of users IDs, name, you know, stuff like this. There's a relationship between these mm -hmm. two APIs and these are REST APIs. So you say user one, and just get data about that user one. Similarly, you can say posts one, and you get just the post, the post with the ID one. You can also do something like you know, user ID one, and you get just the posts with the user ID one. So that's, imagine these are the two APIs that we are sort of playing. Right? Mm -hmm. What I'll do is say, you can just say npm install hyphen g tail call hq tail call this will install tail call on your system i already have it installed um, you can do this it'll tell you what is the latest version we are on 0.18 um let's do a tail call in it yes let's say app dot graphq app um, yes okay so now you've got these three files. This is a YAML file that's useful for the IDE to work. Uh, this is an auto-generated file, which has a lot of information to make the IntelliSense work really well. And this is the main file where we start writing our logic. So you don't have to write code for this, but to, po to expose these APIs as a GraphQL API, you'll, we'll just start with the GraphQL file. So we'll say, okay, schema, schema has query, these are standard things. So type query and uh, type query let's say has posts which is of type post and the way you can query it is let's say path is posts and what i can do is i can set up a base url over here let's say base url yes, perfect. and this is actually you know um, intellisense is working on this system so you, when you get all the options that are available for which are valid options which is which makes sure that you don't mess around with the dsls it's auto there's auto complete let's add post post looks like this okay good oh yeah perfect let me not add user just yet so post also has user id which is a type of ID. okay good um once you have this, let me, just, so this, this is the, this is the file. So what I'm doing over here is I'm just saying, okay, set up a post, it, you know, use the post API, which is host, which is basically on slash post, uh, the base URL is specified as JSON placeholder and, uh, you know, the type post, uh, the structure of the post is sort of shared, uh, is also specified in this file. Now what I'll do mm -hmm. is I'll just say, start the server and then let's say posts, posts give you title. And you query, there you go. So you got all your posts on the right. Okay. And it made one API call over here, which you can see is slash posts. And you query for post title and body, get that, the ID, and so now, this is good, but this is not true. This is not the true power of GraphQL. So what we'll do is we'll add you know a field called user or type user and just say value dot. So this is just a slight mustache template that we've written where you said, mm -hmm. okay, take the value, this value, the value that is available over here and pick the user ID field and make a call here on user, uh, uh, slash users to get user, right? When you do that, essentially you are, you are integrating the user information right into the post. Let's try to start the server. Okay. So the user type was not fine. So we have to find user. Okay, cool. Let's let's just drop address for now. And there you go. So so started um, posts. Let's see if we have user. User has name. I'll just get rid of this. So there you go. So it made quite a few requests on the back end. You know, figured out all the 
ways because there are hundreds of posts. So for each post, it's making a call to get the user and ultimately it's able to orchestrate everything for you. Now, this is something that's highly unoptimized and that's what you see over here. It says there was one N plus one that was found, right? So you mm. could, what you could also do is you could you know, check this file. You could say check and tell you that even there's one N plus one. You want to get the actual information you could do. Mm -hmm. So here we, we make a separate API request for each post separately. Yes. Got so it. making hundreds of API calls, right? So if there's a we're getting a lot of requests on your GraphQL system, you'll end up triggering a lot of upstream calls, which is not something uh, which is not ideal. So mm -hmm. you can get this information even before you start the server. Uh, you don't have to actually deploy it in production and then identify that you know getting too many requests. Before the server even starts, you can say it will call check and uh, n plus one queries and it'll tell you that there's one n plus one. If you go from post to user, you know, that could trigger an n plus one issue. Now, how do we solve this? So one option is maybe we can add some sort of matching. So let's put a match. Okay, just say delay. Maybe hundred ms delay. Right. So what I'm saying is for each just just batch API calls for hundred milliseconds. Right. So that way you'll not end up making too many requests. Um, earlier I was making hundred requests, and even though there were users that were shared across the posts, um, I was still making that request again and again for each post. With this, if I you know let's start the server again. There you go. Let's make a request. Okay, so it's a little more optimized, right? There are just 10 calls over here. When we didn't have this, started the server, there were hundreds of calls actually. There you go. So there's a lot of calls that were happening before, yep. which we've been able to optimize this way. Now, but if you try to do a check, the n plus one still remains on this file. Mm -hmm. If I, even with the n plus one problem is not solved. I've been able to sort of batch the API calls upstream, but the N plus one problem still exists. Uh, to solve that problem, what I can do is I can say, okay, instead of hitting this URL, um, if you remember, I showed you this API. What if we hit this URL? And what if we say, said that, you know, hit user ID and user ID equals two. What will happen in that case? It gives you posts for those users. Similarly, mm -hmm. you can use users and you can say id equals one id equals two so these apis are rest apis so you can actually query for data by apis by by id here i'm just getting two id two two users if i could leverage this api then i could get all the users in one api call and uh, that basically means i need to make this particular url um, so i can do that i can just say query Key is going to be ID value is going to be okay, value is going to be value dot ID. Value dot user ID. So basically the value, the user ID is being passed as a query value to the user. Okay. And when you do this, let's see if what checks is check the Check doesn't know if there's anything that has changed. Really. Just if it says that this is still an n plus one call, right? So it needs another parameter which is group by. Here we just say ID. So we say okay, get the so this is the last operation that we need to perform. So you get you made the API call, get the get the response, and just group it by the user ID. Mm -hmm. And when you do that and you check now, there's it says at compile time we know even before we start the server it says there's just there's no n plus one. It's awesome. right. Let's try to start the server. Okay, and let's hit and this. Now we expect to see only two calls, right? Exactly. So there's a post call and there's a user call with all the user IDs. So I just made one call and I was able to get that response, right? And I can batch. I batched it over 100 milliseconds. So it could you could be getting thousands of requests on your system. It's going to batch all of them together, make one call upstream, get the data, and send. Mm -hmm. So this is just a, you know, a basic 
example of what Tailcall can do for you and can go beyond that. A lot of powerful primitives are embedded, uh, mostly opt-in, uh, because sometimes batching can have, you know, uh, batching is basically making you delay for a period of time. So it's not valid. Sometimes you just want to hit those calls and get the data and maybe the list is not that long and you're fine with, uh, you know, making an N plus one call. So N plus one optimizations are opt-in, but the good thing is you know upfront how many N plus one issues you have in your system. So you don't have to actually, it can introspect your orchestration spec and identify what kind of N plus one problems you have. So mm -hmm. yeah, this, and we have quite a lot of features. This works on gRPC. And uh, you, know, you can change the schema. I, we are also working on a way where right now, uh, if you see this, this is all GraphQL. The uh, the experience of querying data is all GraphQL. We are working on a way where you don't really need to use GraphQL. What if you want to expose it as a REST endpoint? How would that look? So what if you could get that GraphQL experience only within the DSL, where you specify your types, specify how you want to orchestrate things, but execution would happen over REST or gRPC, you would get a lot more better performance and uh, you know flexibility. That so you don't have to migrate everything to GraphQL to use our product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that also makes sense. I I really like how simple everything was to set up and get started, and I yeah. especially like this uh, before runtime. I mean the compile time checks of the N plus ones. I think it's a huge superpower yeah. to detect yeah. all the N plus one situations. You could also do caching, you know. So, for example, um, I could put an operator called cache, and I could say max age, and say say thousand. Right. So now, what is this? All this data is going to be cached. So, that query, the first request will go. Hopefully, cache works. Um, wait, is it got cached or? Something? Work. So cache feature, I think, is not this enabled. Maybe. Now it's caching. So you, you see the logs, but it's caching. It's, it's getting the responses and things. Yeah, so the responses are immediate right now. So that, that's how this works. You can add and caching. A lot of such powerful features are just baked into the solution. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And for the queries here on the left side, we um, did slash post and slash user. So they both go to that base URL we set in the upstream yes. directive. Yes. But yeah. is, it, is it possible to like make the make that an arbitrary URL instead of just a yes. subpath? So you could post needs to go to say HTTPS posts dot Com. And maybe users, you something like this. Mm -hmm. It's set up in case you have users. So essentially, we can mix and match any service we want yes. together. And is this also true across uh, protocols? Like, could I mix like my GraphQL services with my REST? Absolutely. That's one of the key features. You could actually, let's say, let's say the user is not coming via HTTP, it's coming via gRPC. So you could do gRPC and you could say the name of the service over here, whatever the user service is. Method. 
you have, you have to specify your protobuf file over here, mm -hmm. whatever the file is, so that you can integrate. But that's it. That's about it. You don't have to do anything else. And you can now you are composing an HTTP API with the gRPC API. You could also actually connect with the GraphQL. So you could have a GraphQL service, and you can integrate with GraphQL. So let's say the let's say the base URL of that GraphQL service is something like this. So looks sort of like this. No part. Uh, you can say there's a user service which is just exposed. It's a subgraph, for example. So this is a this is a different take on how to compose graphs instead of using federation, graphical federation, which is popularized by Apollo. Here, what we are saying is uh, just it's just an RPC call. Right, for us, it, there's no real difference between gRPC, GraphQL, and HTTP. Mm -hmm. You can just call a GraphQL API like this. You can specify if it's a query. One last thing is uh, uh, this file can get fairly complicated. You know, you're writing a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of configurations. So you can auto generate it. So this file, we also support JSON and YAML formats. So we can auto generate it based on, say, a Swagger endpoint, and uh, we could uh, load that up for you. And you mm. can compose configs. You could say, you know, there's a J there are a couple of configs. Each team maintains their own configs. We can merge those configs and deploy it on one infrastructure. So one of the things with GraphQL federation, which is one of the problems uh, that I feel is uh, not talked about enough, is with federation there is a real physical abstraction that is created uh, rather than a virtual abstraction that you could have introduced. What I mean by that is, what if your orchestration logic would lie in configurations and the orchestration <clears throat> orchestration could happen at one layer rather than you know each subgraph like instead of having subgraphs working as that abstraction where orchestration is happening and then at a router level what if you could take all that logic move it to one system and run it there right so you could essentially there is still a virtual abstraction between the systems because they are different configurations but the way it's executed is on one runtime. You have a shared common runtime, which is not doing IO calls between graphs, which is directly talking to the service, getting data. So that turns out to be a lot more efficient, a lot more performing, and you get a lot more control at compiling. Got it. Yeah, that sounds very powerful. Awesome. So with, with tail call, I can use gRPC, I can use REST API, and I can use my GraphQL services, and I can compose them in any way I want. So I can even make like little graphs and then combine them with other. Yes. Kind of like a building a Lego house out of microservices and optimize them with caching, with batching, etc. Sounds super powerful to me. Phenomenal. This was awesome. Thank you so much for the demo, Tushar.